Welcome to Celebration Church West Bank Online. We're glad you're here today. Usually we'll give you a high five, a hug, tell someone you love them, but instead, take out your cell phone. Text someone, tell them you love them, pray for them, invite them to service today as we worship with you today. Once again, thank you so much for joining us at Celebration Church Online. Maybe you joined us during our worship time and we are so happy that you're here. If you were joining us in one of our actual church buildings, we would be giving you a worship guide with all kinds of information and resources for you. 
Even though we can't do that physically, we have found a way to do it digitally. If you go to webcc.info, you can access all the information that would normally be in a worship guide. You can enter your prayer requests, enter any decisions that you may have made, and even follow along with today's sermon notes. So if you will do that right now on your, either your smartphone or your laptop, go to webcc.info and you can follow along with the sermon notes for today's message. Why don't you do that right now as we listen to God's Word? Thank you so much for joining us. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about how you can fight fear and access the peace of God. We've been in a brand new series talking about fighting fear and living by faith. And when you live by faith, you experience the blessings of God. I want to talk to you this morning about how Jesus gave us a gift called peace. So if you have your Bibles, turn me to John chapter 14 and listen to the word of God this morning. Jesus said these words, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. Wherever you're at, would you say that word? Say peace. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you, I'm going away, but I will come back to you again. I don't know about you, but I am thankful Jesus is coming back again. If you really love me, you will be happy that I'm going to the Father who is greater than I am. I have told you these things before they happen, so when they happen, you will believe. I don't have much more time to talk to you because the ruler of this world approaches. He has no power over me. I want you to listen to those words and know one thing, that the devil has no power over you. Greater is he that lives in you than he that lives in this world. Verse 31, but I will do what the Father requires of me so that the world will know that I love the Father. Would you take a moment and would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this word. We've been praying, we've been fasting for our people. I pray that you will fill them with peace that surpasses all understanding. I speak against any fear. You have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I pray all these things for your glory and our good. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk to you a moment about the gift that God gives us called peace. Now, I can preach to you till I'm blue in the face about the peace of God, and I can tell you how amazing of a gift it is. But it's not till you open up the peace of God and experience it for yourself and you receive the gift of God that you'll truly know what I'm talking about. I want to ask you a question. What's the best gift you ever received in your life? I could think back to when I was a child. My mom, she worked two jobs. She did all she could to take care of us. Now, you know you're struggling when you got two TVs. You got a big TV at the bottom that don't work and a small TV on top where you watch the television. And that's how we were. Man, we were struggling, but my mom, she loved us so much. She always wanted to give us gifts. I'll never forget one Christmas. She saved up all her money to buy us the brand new Nintendo 64. We knew what it was. She knew what she got us. She wrapped it up. She put it underneath the tree. And every day she went to work. Me and my two brothers, we would unwrap that gift. We would play Nintendo 64. As soon as we knew my mom was coming back from work, we would wrap it up and put it underneath the tree. I'm here to let you know that many Christians live the same way when it comes to the peace of God. They experience the peace of God just on a Sunday or when they watch a message or when they listen to the word of God. But then they put up the peace of God Monday through Saturday. I'm here to let you know and remind you the peace of God is not meant to be experienced one day of the week. But the peace of God is meant to be experienced 365 days every day of the year. I want you to experience the peace of God. You know, the peace of God is something that everybody seems to want, but very few people seem to have. Many people that I talk to every day are struggling in this moment with fear. But I'm here to let you know you don't have to struggle any longer. The peace of God is a gift that he wants to give you. But just as we learned last week, God has not given us a spirit of fear. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Listen to me. Fear will lead to frustration and it will rob you of this peace that I'm talking to you about right now. It will rob you of joy and it will rob you of purpose. In your life. So let me ask you this question on a scale of one to 10, how peace filled is your life? Many people living without peace because of problems. Many people living without peace because of failure. Many people living without peace because of other people. There were two moms talking one day about their teenage daughters. One mom looked at the other mom and she said, I'm a nervous wreck. And she said, why are you a nervous wreck? She said, because my teenage daughter don't tell me anything. The other mom chuckled. She said, that's nothing. I'm a nervous wreck too. My teenage daughter tells me everything. So I don't know what's causing you problems, whether it's people, whether it's places, whether it's things, whether it's the news. But I want to hear, let you know that the peace of God which transcends all understanding can guard your heart and guard your mind this morning. So I got a word for you. Don't, 
If you put your problems in God's hand, he will put his peace in your heart. I'm so thankful that when we put our problems in God's hands, he fills our heart with perfect peace. So what is it going to take for us to experience the peace of God? I have four quick things for you, and you can also follow along at webcc.info. Number one, living a peaceful life requires plugging into the Lord's presence. John chapter 16, verse 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Listen to Jesus' words right there. He says, in him. So just as you plug in a lamp into the power source so you can shine light, you have to plug into Jesus so you can experience the peace and the goodness of God. Can I ask you a question? Are you plugged into the Lord? Not just on Sundays, but are you plugged into him every day? Of the week. John chapter 15, verse 4 Abide in me, and I in you, and the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. The Greek word for abide is to dwell. How do you know if you really love somebody? When you take time to spend with them. We have to dwell with Jesus and spend time with him on a daily basis. When you spend time with him, you get the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. You get joy that's unspeakable. You get purpose in your life. So here's a few quick ways that you can abide with the Lord. You can abide with the Lord by praying daily. You know, if the only time you pray is when you're in trouble, then guess what? You're in trouble. You know, the devil smiles when you stop going to church. The devil laughs when you stop reading the Bible. But the devil shouts for joy when a Christian stops praying because he knows that you've been defeated. You also abide with the Lord by reading your Bible daily. Listen to me, you can read other books, but you'll never have another book read you. You can abide by, with the Lord by praying daily, by reading your Bible, by also attending a church service. So congratulations, you can check that off the book. You're doing that right now. But I want you to go ahead and tag somebody in the comments below and invite them to church with you today. You can also spend time with God by attending a life group. I'm so thankful about what God's doing here on the West Bank. This past week, we started three new life groups online. God's doing amazing things. You can also spend time with God by listening to Christian music. I've learned in my life that praise always lets me out of my pits. You also spend time with God by living a godly life. Now, when I first became a pastor, I had really long hair. And I'll never forget, someone came up to me one day on the front row. And they looked me up and down for about 10 minutes. They walked away. They came back 10 minutes later and looked me up and down again. I mean, you know, I started getting a little worried right there, everybody. As they looked me up and down, they asked me a question. They said, you the pastor of this church? And I said, yes, sir, I am. He said, that's funny because you don't look nothing like the picture online. In that moment, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and revealed something to me. How many times do people in this world pass us by? And they ask us a question. Are you a Christian? And we say the words, yes, we are. And they say, that's funny because you don't look nothing like what a Christian looks like in the word of God. See, it's important for us to spend time with God and live a godly life. My question for you this morning is, do you look like Jesus Christ? Number two, living a peaceful life requires making thankfulness a daily practice. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Now, where was Paul writing these words? He was writing these words in prison. See, Paul, who had some, some circumstances that weren't the best, he still had a thankful attitude. I call it the attitude of gratitude. And we're in a time and a day where it's easy to complain. It's easy to get bitter. It's easy to get angry. But instead, may we have an attitude of gratitude. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 says this, Always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful, and all circumstances, not just in the good ones, but in all circumstances, we should be thankful. See, when we're focused on being grateful, the problems in our life become smaller and God becomes bigger. You see, God can handle every problem that we're going through in our lives. You see, the truth is we all have worries in our lives and we hear that God cares for us and we should give him our worries. So we say, okay, God, I'm going to give you some of my worries. I'm going to give you some of my anxiety. But then after nothing happens for about a minute, we say, God, give me back those worries. See, the problem is this, that our worries are too big and our God is too small. But what we need to know this morning that really that our God should be big and our problems and our worries should be small. So when you give God your worries, you know that he can handle every single thing you are going through. But the Bible does not say just to give God your worries and your cares, for he cares for you. The Bible also tells us that our lives should be hidden 
in God. So people don't even see us anymore. They just see God. I got a word for you that is that God is bigger than any problem we are facing in our lives. I am so thankful that God can handle every worry that it's not too big for him to take care of. Number three, living a peaceful lives require living by the Lord's principles. Let's do a little background study on this word peace. The Hebrew word for the word peace is shalom, which means to be whole or to be complete. Now, you know this word as Jehovah Shalom, which represents God. He is the Lord of peace. The Hebrew word for peace that we remember is shalom that I just talked about. And we all know that God has peace for us today. You see, in Jesus Christ, we can experience wholeness and completeness. That means that Jesus does not only give us peace, that Jesus is peace himself. So may we hide our lives in Jesus this morning. See, we can't have harmony or peace without obedience to God. Listen to me. Obedience is our part and the outcome is the Lord's. I'll never forget when I was at the gym one day, I was working out and I saw some guy working out by himself and I felt like I should share my faith with him. But I got real scared. I don't know if you ever got scared to obey God, but I did. I said, I can't do this. We're at the gym. He's going to make fun of me. I never forgot. I just felt the Holy Spirit give me some boldness. I go up to him. And I share my faith with him. I pray with him. He gets saved. He gets plugged into Celebration Church. I go back to the mission field. I come back two years later. He's still serving God at church. I said, Eddie, it's so good seeing you worshiping God and attending a life group and all the things you're doing. He said, yeah, not only me, but my whole family saved. I said, man, that's incredible. He said, yeah, this is my sister, Daniela. If you don't know, I married his sister two years later. I'm not telling you if you share your faith, you're going to meet your spouse, though you may. But I am telling you that when you obey God, a blessing is waiting for you on the opposite side. So when we live by disobedience, we are stating that we don't agree that God's way of doing things are better than our ways. Listen to me like a kid running in the street is what I'm doing today. I'm trying to tell you that living a life of disobedience, you should not be in that street. There's an 18 wheeler and it will destroy you. Get out that street. Don't live a life of disobedience. Obey God and he will bless you. Isaiah chapter 48 says this. There is no peace for the wicked, says the Lord. So we learn today that we are to plug into his presence, that we should practice thankfulness and that we are to live by his principles. Lastly, if we want to experience a peaceful life, it requires believing in the Lord's promises. Verses 28 and 29. Remember what I told you, Jesus says, I'm going away, but I will come back again. Boy, that's a great time to give God some praise. I have told you these things before they happen so that when they happen, you will believe. Jesus was promising the disciples that even though he was leaving, he will be back again. And he will leave us a helper, an advocate called the Holy Spirit. That is a great promise that we should stand on. Man, I have, I'm so thankful for the promises of God. Over 365 times in the word of God, it tells us that we should not fear. In the word of God, the Bible tells us, Hebrews chapter 13, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Joshua chapter 21, that not one of God's good promises will fail. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, for all of God's promises are yes and amen. First Peter chapter five, verse seven, cast your care on God for he cares for you. Romans chapter four, Abraham was fully convinced and we can too, that God is able to do all he promised. Isaiah chapter 26, verse three, that God will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Hebrews chapter 10, that God can be trusted to keep his promises. Psalms 91, that he will cover you and he will protect you. John chapter 14, Jesus says, peace I live, leave with you. Psalms chapter 23, though I walk through the the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they do comfort me. John chapter 16, you will have trouble in this world, but take heart. I have overcome this world. Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven. Don't be anxious about nothing, but in everything through prayer and thanksgiving, make your request made known to God and the peace which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and guard your mind. Isaiah chapter 43, fear not. I have redeemed you. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not overtake you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Maybe that's a promise you need to hear. Whatever it is you are going through, whatever family member is in the hospital, God will see you through. He is an ever present help in time of need. Now I could tell you about all the promises of God, but what promises of God have you been standing on? It's important for you to know the promises of God in your life. 
Now there's a restaurant I've heard a lot of things about. I would love to go one day. It's a restaurant called Houston's. And I heard that Houston's has the best ribs in town. Now you could tell me about the ribs at Houston. You could tell me how it's delicious. You could tell me how great it is, but it's not till I go to Houston's. I sit down, I look at the menu, and I say, I will take some ribs. And I taste those ribs and I see how good those ribs really are. And when I taste those ribs, I know there's going to be a difference between Houston's ribs and the McRib at McDonald's. Now, I could preach to you till I'm blue in the face and I could tell you about the peace of God, how it transcends all understanding. And I could tell you all the promises of God. But it's not till you sit down and open up the menu called the Bible and you see how, how good the peace of God is. It says in his word to taste and see that the Lord is Good. And when you taste and see the peace of God, you will know that nothing in this world could compare to the peace of God. Jesus spoke about this peace in John chapter 14, and he was referring to the peace of God, even though he knew he was about to be betrayed, even though he knew he was going to be crucified. So you can know even in the midst of trouble, even in the midst of hardship, even in the midst of suffering, the peace of God can guard your heart and guard your mind. And he tells us in John chapter 16, verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. And in this world, you will have trouble. But to take heart, I have overcome the world. You know, as I think about Jesus' words, I think about the story of a king. And he told everybody in town that he would give a reward to whoever can paint the most beautiful painting of peace. Everybody in the town became an artist because they all wanted to win the money. But the King chose two paintings to be his final two, and he was only going to choose one of them. He revealed the first one, and it was the most beautiful lake. I mean, it was calm water. There was a sunset and beautiful trees in the background. Everybody gasped when they said, this is the one that's going to win because this looks like peace to me. Then the king unveiled the second one, and it was a great storm. There was these rocks everywhere and a waterfall and there was thunder and there was rain and there was wind and everybody said, how could this represent peace? The king looked closely at the painting and he saw a little bird standing there on a rock, so peace filled, as if, as if it was singing. The king said, this is the painting that represents peace because peace is not found in perfect circumstances. No peace is found in the calmness and the midst of the storm. And can I just remind you, everything that you are going through, the storm around you, that there could be peace inside of you because the Savior inside of you is greater than the storm around you and that you can stand on the rock, Jesus Christ. Would you take a moment and would you close your eyes and bow your head? I want to talk to two groups of people. The first group of people are those who don't know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, then you don't know peace because no Jesus means no peace. But when you know Jesus, you will know peace. If you want to know that peace that transcends all understanding, would you pray this prayer with me wherever you're at? Would you say these words? Say, Dear Jesus, I pray you forgive me of my sins. I pray you save my soul. I admit I'm a sinner. I believe you are the God of this universe. And I confess you today that you are my Lord and you are my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, I want you to indicate that on webcc.info that you pray with a pastor. The second group of people that I want to pray for today are those who have been a Christian for a very long time but haven't been living a peace-filled life. Would you take a moment, would you place both of your hands over your heart, whatever it is you're going through. You may have loved ones in the hospital now. You may feel even sick. I believe that the peace of God which transcends all understanding can give you perfect peace today. Would you place both of your hands over your heart? I want to pray for you. I've been praying for you every night, me and my family. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for every single person that is watching right now online. I pray as they have their hands over their heart, you put your hand over their hands and you remind them you have the last word. The doctors don't have the last word. The physician's report doesn't have the last word. You have the last word for you are the great physician. By your stripes, all 39 of them, we are healed. So I pray that you would heal my brothers and my sisters for their family members that are in the hospital, that they would be discharged, that they would be sent home, that they will feel better 
Even now, I'm looking forward to testimonies and praises of how you came through for them, O oh God. I pray you will bless them and you remind them you have not given them a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I pray you remind us that you have given us a gift today, not to be experienced just one day of the week, but to be experienced for the rest of our lives every single day. I pray that you will bless them, you keep them. I look forward to hearing what you're doing in their lives in the coming days. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. If you made any decision, go to webcc.info at this time. You can indicate that you pray with a pastor. If you have any prayer requests, I would love to pray for you today. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for our service. We hope that you were encouraged by today's message. I know that I was, and I know that you can also encourage others by sending the link to them. You can send it to your friends, to your family members, or even tag them in the comments below so that even if they missed it this morning, they can still come back and watch it. As always, we are so thankful for those of you who have been faithfully giving online. Even though we're not meeting in person, there are still ways for you to give. If you return to that website, the webcc.info, there is a place for you to give online. We want you to know that your givings not only help us continue our ministry, but they help impact ministries in Louisiana, in the United States, and even across the world. We are so thankful for you and for the impact that you are making to spread God's message to people all over the world. We're excited to see you back here next Sunday for our next week's sermon.